on to some more Mark V interesting stuff. So all this here that you'll see laid in front of us is pretty much everything that we're going to need on this build to get it running basically, except for wiring. So we'll have a little look at what we've got, a little look at some intricacies and how we do things. Um, and then hopefully when Paul gets on to building it, we'll try and record him doing it. We're sort of a bit late on it day at this moment in time, so we're not going to be doing it all in one big hit. It's probably going to end up being uh, next week now because everybody's going racing tomorrow. So let's start with a block because that's the, the main thing here. So this is just a standard oval port block that has been skimmed. We've not done anything else to it. We've not owned it. We've not bored it. We've not done any of that stuff because they've got a fairly decent piston to bar gap, which we'll talk about when we look at pistons. But for a big power build like 400 horsepower or maybe a little bit more than what this is, this is only going to be, 230s, we and a sort of opportunity going for a little bit more, we'd probably open that bar size up a bit. What you can see at the bottom of there is the oil squirters. Now these ones, I'm not sure if they're kicking about on here somewhere, but we put bigger ones in anyway. So they'll get opened out. And the main thing with the oil squirters, when you're building the block, you make sure it's actually squirting at the oil in the piston. Because if it doesn't squirt at that oil in the piston, there's no point having it there. There's no point hitting it underneath it. It needs to be going straight into that. So. And they're never aiming where you think they're aiming, especially once you've took them out and put them back in. So you've got to make sure whether you put a little straw inside or a bit of stick or pump some oil through it and watch it squirting in when you built it. Do whatever you need to do, make sure they're squirting in. So the next step is doing the piston ring gaps. Whether you leave them as they come from the factory or whether you make them bigger, that's up to you. We don't tell anybody what piston ring gaps we run because what we run is what we're happy with. These negatives are going too tight and these negatives are going too loose. We'll let the person build the engine decide what they're going to do. But if you're pulling top off your piston, your ring gap's probably too small. And if there's oil blowing out your breather constantly, they're probably a bit too big. That's as far as we can go with that because it just depends what you're using the engine for, how you're using it, and what bar size you've started with and everything. So it's too complicated to get into this is what you should run and away you go. So when we have the block done, we just skim it and that's going to be absolutely perfect. The one thing a lot of people do is forget to skim the block. Don't even bother building an engine if you're not going to skim block. It's just probably 75 quid, very well spent. So this engine is running the standard crank for this oval port engine. It's in absolutely perfect condition, no wrong way. We generally run the PD crank, but this is running a bit less power, circuit use, it's a bit less. You're not using the torque all the time like you do in the, uh, in the drag cars. So you're not sort of launching with a lot of torque. So we thought four kilograms lighter, it were worth doing. That means we use the oval pop oil pump and the belt that does the uh, oil pump. That's all new. The piston rings are just hiding in that buffer oil in there. So the harmonic balancer, that's balanced to the crank like we had the assembly before, and if everybody can remember. That's a PD one because it's wider and a different offset. We've also got this little thing that don't come on every engine, a little cover. Just pop it on there and they don't, you don't have an engine full of gravel when you go into gravel. New oil seal, the main one that goes behind the flywheel. This orange little thing that tells you not to take it out, that's because this has got the oil effect ring for your crank sensor. So that has got to be put on and you don't take this out either. You leave that in and you push it on nice and gentle so you don't turn the seal inside out. Leave it locked off at top dead centre and away you go. So, pretty simple, but very easy to knack up. We get them wrong every now and again, and we have to take gearbox back off, stop oil leak, or put it back. Very, very rare, but it does happen, so you've got to be careful. The sump, this is, because we're using the old style oil pump, sorry, the new style oil pump, we've had to make this sump up for this car, so we've cut this plate out, welded it in. Don't need to be too pretty, pretty inside. We're going to have these laser cut for the next one. 
and we've also, of course it's not the hybrid sump like we'd prefer to run, we've welded some aluminium on bottom there, just if you hit a curb or something like that, it's not going to bust it, that's that. Mains caps, make sure they go in right order, if you put them in the wrong way around your crank will probably bind. ARP bolts for those, brand new Corbin Schmidt bearings for them, they very rarely wear out, you could probably get away with whatever used ones come out of this engine, but we're going this far. New thrust bearings, they generally don't wear too bad, but if your car's had a stiff clutch in it for a long time, they'll have a little bit of signs of wear, so it's worth just sorting that out. Con rods, because we're not running stupid power again, we decided we'll just balance these end to end and just reuse the original ones. I'd be surprised if we bend one. The only reason we'd bend one is if we over revved it by down changing too early, might break one or bend it because you've swallowed some water and at that point you don't want it to push head up, you just want it to bend rod, put a new rod in, off you go. Comrod bearings, make sure you get the right ones to suit the crank journal because there's two different sizes of crank journal, this one's a big one and also these have got a coating, I can't remember exactly what it is now but that one, you see the two different ones, that's the top rod bearing, that's the one that takes all the abuse because your piston's brain against it there, the other one's just got to stop the piston pulling the top off. So, the purple probably wincing at me touching all these with scruffy hands, but it all gets a wipe down with a lint free rag before we put them in and brake clean it. So they're, they're quite important, you've got to have the sputter one to the top. If you don't, if you swapped them round, the bearing won't last long. ARP rod bolts, we have no problems with these. They're absolutely perfect. These rods with them bolts will take a ton of punishment. So the pistons, these are just the factory pistons that we machine out to a bigger hole for the oil ways. We balance them by doing that. So all these pistons are weighing, weighing point not two grams of each other. So very, very accurately the same. All marked up to make sure we know which one they came from so the, the pistons are going back in the same bar they came out of so the wear's all the same. Then we've had um, the valve pockets machined so that we can put a more aggressive cam in in future if we want to. And just so we've got that little bit in a buffer when things get hot you're not going to have any valve to piston contact but not a real concern on this engine because the cams that we're running are not very aggressive. The, put, the piston ball, we've not machined it, left that as it is, I want to keep the compression high because we're not running any nitrous so it's not really a big deal and if we bend a rod we'll put a stronger rod in, if then we start lifting the head then we're going to have to start thinking of putting a different, a bigger piston ball in but we'll see about that one. And the underside is coated as well, this is a, a coating that allows the heat to come out quicker and then the coating on the top is PTG this is to stop the heat getting in as much so you keep most of the heat in the charge and in the exhaust which helps spool your turbo, helps keep your piston cool which stops it swelling, which stops it nipping in the bar so if we didn't coat the pistons I'd be very surprised if we got away with art opening the bar size up, might want to go one or two foul but then you're opening that up so you don't have the piston swelling up and sticking in the bar but then you've got the problem where you're going to end up start melting your bowl because you've not got that insulation from it. So, not 100% necessary, but worthwhile. ARP head studs, these are some that we chop down and modify so that they fit in. Not a big job. And then we use ARP nuts. These are a specific nut suited to this application so you can get it, get the bolt, get the socket in. We have to use a special socket for that as well. So that's that. The, um, we'll, we'll work as way this way, so I'll just look at this here. That's just a part that we put on to replace the thermostat because we're going for the electric water pump. So we need to weld a barb on there to suit weight going out there, but that's for later on. Oil cooler outlet, so that's going to replace that on there. So we can just send the oil cooler straight out. And then just the factory pipe. Some of them will get used, some will get modified, but we'll work that out as we're going. These are our upgraded valve springs. We have these made in the UK. These are a good quality item, never had one fail, never had any trouble from them. Fairly decent hour increase, I think 30% increase in seat pressure or something like that, which is required. The springs in these are not too soft, but not a big deal to put some harder ones in. 
the valves, these ones are used and they're not the biggest ones we do, these are the stage one valves, but we thought on this engine, we're not opening the bar size up, we're going to be running it hot and we'd already got this head and stuff like that from the city go. So we decided we'll keep those valves, no wrong with them. We'll keep this head because we know this is a good head and we just had it skimmed again. Make sure that we're not going too far on the skim to the point where we end up with a valve sticking out too much and then you'd have to have them machined in regardless. So we know where we are with that one. So this head will be going back on. New valve stem oil seals. Need to make sure we use them. And then all this stuff on here, I'll put a picture up rather than taking these out of the box, but these are the genuine uh, Corbin Schmidt rocker arms and the, and the lifters that we need to use to make sure that the car and then everything works properly. So that's all new because you can, you can reuse them, but every now and again they do fail in the standard engine. So it's not a bad idea that just swap all them. It's not stupid money. It comes as part of the cam kit anyway. The cam kit comes with the bolts. It's all the cam carrier down. These are not individual little cam caps. It's just a full girdle that you bolt on. These are the cams. These are machined from blanks. So these are a little bit heavier, which is the only thing I don't like about them really. A little bit heavier than the standard ones because they're a, a pressed, the standard ones are a pressed steel. Uh, sorry, a hollow steel shaft with some pressed on lobes. But they could spin on the cam as well so it's not always a good idea that's when you've got no idea what's going on when your timing's all right and uh, your engine won't run you know that you've spun a lobe these engines are not so bad for it but some are all the relevant gaskets and stuff like that i don't know why we've got the egr base ones here maybe we're going to use some of them on the head just to blank it off i'm not too sure probably get rid of them inlet gaskets and that's for the water hose and cam the cam gasket cam pulley all this stuff here Except this, all this is the wider cam belt conversion. So we use the 25 mil belt from the earlier engine rather than a 20 mil that comes on the oval port engine. I think VW just went thinner because they never had any belt failures. And then what they did is decide to introduce a failure because stuff like the Crafter vans with a 20 mil belt, they're failing all the time. So it's a worthwhile upgrade. It's a few hundred quid extra, but you know, it's done right and it's done once. And then the timing belt kit's no, no more expensive next time round. But you need the extra pulleys and stuff to make it right. So then this one, this little pulley here, and this little blank is what we blank the water pump off with. And then we use this pulley to replace the water pump and keep the belt in tension. I think I said about that before. That took some finding. These are the all the backing, backing plates for the timing belt covers, which the timing belt covers over there. You've got to, <coughs> pardon me, You've got to run a timing belt cover on a track car. You can't run a track or race car without one, otherwise you're going to end up with gravel stuck in between your belt and gravel don't move and your belt does. So that ends in tears. CP3 pump. This is the stage two, I believe. We don't need to go to the stage three on this because we're not pushing absolutely stupid power. All the bracketry and everything that you need, all the fitting bits, that's to reduce it down because it's a smaller size on here, somewhere there. Um, injectors, these are just a stage one solenoid that we run, so they're a fair bit bigger than the standard oval port ones, not massively. A little bit of upgraded hardware, which is we only do them with our heads. Standard rock cover, just put new seals in it, new gasket. Rail sensor, that's a 2700 bar one, so we've got that. Standard rail, we use a standard regulator, but these can go faulty, especially if they've had rail pressure oscillation issues or some crap in them, so you've got to take them out, clean them off before you use them. So we'll put that in the ultrasonic before we use it. Then we've got genuine oil filter, always use the genuine stuff. Rock oil, carbon, 1050. Works absolutely fine on our stuff, but we would get away with a platinum as well. But this is, it's not cheaper at all, but we, le we can leave this in a little bit longer. So we're not, overall, it probably is a bit cheaper, but as long as we don't have any failures. Um, some more time belt. We get rid of the tensioner on these, which is there. We take that out and just uh, run the normal 
bracket and then we just put a stretchy belt on there instead. The alternator that we're going for is just like a PD one. These are a little bit more simpler, not using any cam bus and stuff like that, no voltage regulator, just, it's just on. Don't cause any problems then. We know that we didn't have any trouble with them. Inlet manifold, this is a round port manifold, not an oval port. So this has got the longer neck. That means then we can run just a shortened version of our e This is an old one, but we'll just clean it up. We can use a shortened version of that, and then we can use the BKD pipe kit that we run rather than having the anti shutter valve and stuff like that. So that's just simplified. You don't have to do that, but just a simplified version. And then our braided oil feed, which that'll work with our tubular manifold that's, I don't think it's quite come out. It might be back today, uh, it might be next week. Um, so yeah, that'll be back. Um, all coated, ready to go. So hopefully Paul's going to get all this built probably Monday, so next week. Get all this built. The gearbox is already built. Everything's ready to go. So if we get all that done, bolted into the car, the next step is going to be doing, well, while Paul's doing this, Dan's going to be doing some bits on the chassis just finishing off, putting the new subframe on, so we'll try and have a bit of a talk about that. And then we really, we're ready to start doing the little fiddly rubbish bits, getting the wiring in to get the engine running. Maybe while Paul's doing that wiring, I'll be getting down doing the rest of the fabrication work, but most of the stuff is off the shelf, so the tip pipe, boost pipes, uh, the down pipe's gonna be one that we've got a jig for, but it's not gonna be off the shelf, and so we'll put that on as well. Um, so yeah, it's probably just an exhaust that Dan's going to have to make. So, yeah, there's plenty still to do. The project's nowhere near, but we don't need to have this ready. I did have a plan to have it ready for the Burke in October, but that's, it's, it's unrealistic really, especially to have had it tested, creases ironed out end run. So what we'll probably aim for is at the end of the year, there's a race where we're planning on running everything in. So we'll try and get it ready for that. So we've got probably, what was September, end of September? probably got six, seven weeks to have it finished, a couple of shakedowns and ready to race basically. So hopefully this has been interesting. We'll try and we'll try and cut round, cut in some bits of the build and stuff like that. But if we don't, Melon will probably just end the video here and that'll be that. Thank you for watching anyway.